And loaders and bullet casters, welcome back to my bench. Welcome back to our discussion on the 7.62 by 39 cast bullet. And what we have been doing is basically mapping out this CZ 527 rifle so that we can figure out the optimum load that it will shoot. We can figure out what it's going to take to shoot cleanly, accurately, and honestly just to have a lot of fun in the process now if you haven't already i really would like for you to go over to rumble.com and sub me i'm leadsmith45 because there's some content on there that i can't upload on youtube uh yesterday i broke out this brand new noe 314 diameter bullet it drops 161 grain flat point and i gotta tell you I'm super excited to get it started out and work up a load. That's a huge meat plat. It is a gas check bullet. And if you're familiar with uh, some of the frustrations I had, the previous bullet I was using had a very small lube groove. This one is much larger. I'm still going to experiment with powder coating anyways, but I'm kind of thinking about trying both of them. So in part three of this cast bullet project, uh, what we did was we took a chamber casting and I would like to talk a little bit more about that in a coming video because I feel like there's a lot of information I was not able to cover because I was way too focused on trying to not make a mess out of my rifle, uh, which kind of took my mind off of speaking to the camera and letting everyone know what's going on. But we have an excellent chamber casting. Okay, so now we can figure out everything about our rifle's chamber. We can see exactly when the lead to the rifling starts, the throat diameter. We can get an initial measurement of the groove diameter at the breech end. However, that is not conclusive of what the groove diameter is all the way through. That's what we're going to focus on today. I'm going to show you how I like to take a groove diameter measurement and hopefully it's something you'll be able to do as well. Now, now before we slug this barrel and hash out some more numbers so that we can figure out the ideal bullet for this rifle, I want to start something new. Okay, so at the end of this video, I've got a little trivia question. And the thing is, I've got a lot of new subscribers and I kind of want you to get to know exactly, you know, who I am and what I'm all about. And if you can answer my trivia question correctly, if you have a channel, what I'm going to do in the coming videos, one, you're going to get a big shout out. And two, I am going to advertise your channel throughout my entire video and encourage people to join and sign up. We got to look out for each other. Let's have a little bit of fun in the process. Okay, folks, let's get down to brass tacks here. One, we're going to need something pretty accurate to measure with. Uh, this is what most of us are going to have, and I think for the most part it's going to work just fine. Uh, I also like to use this little sterret. It's kind of like putting a microscope to the measurements of this guy right here. So in order to have something to measure, we have to have some kind of medium that we're using. Uh, one of the preferred methods that I have learned is to use dead soft lead. Now I've covered this, basically I've covered this exact same thing using a revolver in my cast bullet success uh, playlist. So check that out if you haven't already. And what I like to use is these dead soft round balls that I cast up several years ago. Um, I don't really have anything to shoot them with. <laughs> <laughs> but I cast it them anyway because I could and so I keep a bunch of them on standby just for taking little measurements and things of that nature. Uh, the benefit of using dead soft lead is it does not spring back. Okay now if you're using your clip on wheel weight alloy or anything that's been alloyed chances are you're going to have a certain amount of spring back and that can skew your numbers. Now if you know exactly how much spring back is going to occur and how long it takes to occur, right on. Go for it. Most of us are just not that cool, though. So if we can use dead soft pure lead, that's what we need to use, at least for the way I do it. Now, these balls 
are ultimately going to take a trip from the muzzle to the breech of my rifle. Okay, so they've got to get sized down to an extent where they will fit. Now, there's a few ways this can be done. What I did was I, I took one of these balls and I had to try a few of them uh, to get them just right. But uh, I kind of just swayed some down in a five inch vise. And then I took it and pushed it up through a Lee sizing die. Okay, I didn't push it all the way through though. I pushed it, you know, part of the way. And that seemed to work just fine. What I do know for sure is this thing is larger than the groove diameter of the barrel. So what I'm going to do is basically just drive this through. And then we're going to take a measurement of this slug once I get it out. So guys, before you do this, absolutely, positively, you must make sure that your barrel is clean. You're also going to want to have, you know, a good little film of proper gun lube ran through there. That's going to make things a whole lot easier for you. You're going to need a rubber mallet, okay? This is what we're going to use to, you know, start getting this slug through. And chances are you're probably going to end up smacking <laughs> your muzzle. So please make sure not only are you using a rubber mallet, make sure it's also clean. Because if you've got debris and grime on there, that can hurt the steel. And we don't want to do that. So go ahead and I'm going to start it off just simply by supporting the rifle in my left hand and hopefully I can give it just enough of a smack to get it started. All right. All right. No harm done. Here she is. She started. Uh, I'll go ahead and give her a few more taps and I'll get it flush. Rubber mallet guys. All right, so that's probably about as far as I'm going to get it just by uh, smacking it with that rubber mallet. So what I'm going to shift to now is something like this non-marring aluminum rod, okay? So keywords here, non-marring. Make sure that uh, what you're using is going to be friendly on your barrel. So guys, you can see the muzzle end protruding up from the soft jaws of my vise, okay? If you're doing work like this and you don't have a vise, you're really going to struggle. Do yourself a favor and make sure that you get yourself a good quality vise. So far, I've been pretty satisfied with this 5-inch version. Smaller will work. There's plenty of options. But please, get yourself a good vise. There's absolutely no reason why you should have to struggle with something like this. That's where mistakes ultimately begin to happen. So before I get started, I want to tell you about a good friend of mine, Darren Wiltz. Okay, he is not on YouTube as a channel, but don't be surprised if he comes up in the future. The reason why I'm bringing him up, he is a member on the uh, Christian hand loaders and shooters and hand loaders group that I run. He's also been following me for quite a while now and paid very close attention to the work that I do. He has recently got into hand loading. A lot of people are being discouraged from it right now. There's a lot of experienced hand loaders that are saying this is the worst time to get involved with it. Well, I'm going to disagree. And if you are hearing people tell you, hey, this is the worst time ever, then what you need to ask them is, well, when is the best time? Because if it's not now, then when? Because we can't get yesterday back. So if you're muscling through this, if you're going through uh, the aches and pains of gathering all your things in order to, to become a hand loader, good on you. Keep at it. My good friend here, Darren Wills, not only has he been doing this, He's actually learned how to make his own primers because they're simply not available. And I'm really impressed with his work. And so keep your eye out because I would not be surprised 
<coughs> I've got a barking dog. I would not be surprised <coughs> if one day his kennel pops up. So here's the noisemaker right here. She apparently wanted to be in this video, and uh, so I'm giving her her few moments of fame. Now she looks like she wants to take a nap. What she is, folks, is a floppy-eared Belgium Malinois. Yes, that is a thing. Oh, speak. She's camera shy. Okay, folks, now we're getting back down to brass cases. All right, so again, non-marring, but that's not enough. Make sure it's clean, okay? Because the junk that might be sticking to it, hopefully you can see this, the junk that might be sticking to it could very well cause an abrasion of some sort. So we're just going to try to get this sucker here nice dead centered. Of course, it's going to try to push my rifle down. Tighten it up just a little bit more. All right, now look. We know that we're fully inside. We just pulled up this little ring. Okay, that's a good sign that lets you know that you have made entry. And from this point on, unless there's anything crazy happening inside there, this should be a fairly simple task. Alright, time to switch to something a little bit longer. Again, already made sure everything was clean, but it has been laying on a table. So I just want to make sure we're still in good shape here. This is really no different than what some of y'all probably saw me do with um, 44 Special Revolver. It's just smaller in diameter and it's a little bit longer. Okay, so this was not able to go all the way through. Uh, what I'm going to do is you can see there's a little bit of a burr right here on this end. What I'm going to do is work that off and smooth it out, and then I'll just double up with those aluminum punches. Okay, so I got that burr removed, and you, know, you can do that. Sandpaper, good soft aluminum. You can use a grinder, but just consider that most of your grinding wheels and that sort of thing will plug up if you use a we're almost there so what I'm gonna do now just to make sure the slug doesn't fall and drop and hit the hard floor I want to try to capture it so I've got one finger down there and come on get down there Boy, this barrel's got to be a mile long. Okay. All right, so here we have it. I'll get it out where you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so here is the slug. And trying to do this without any glare is not too easy, but I think right here you can pretty well see good rifling engagement. So... The indention here is the top of the lens, and the section that's still out is the actual groove diameter. This is just simply the inverse of what's inside the barrel. So now what we can do is take a measurement, and what we're really going to find out is what size the most constricted point of the barrel is. So right here, if you can see this without uh, too much glare, we got a pretty clean 0.313.
but it's worthwhile to measure in multiple spots because it's not always exactly the same all around and we still got us a pretty clean 0.313 so what I do know is that <clears throat> if I'm using bullets that are 0.313 or higher I stand a pretty good chance of uh, getting good performance what I've been using is actually a 0.314 now that NOE mold that I showed you at the beginning of the video that actually drops bullets at 0.316 and so you know that's why I did this chamber casting measurement one thing we need to know is is the neck area of our chamber able to even support the bullet that we're using you know this section just ahead is the throat and it's a mighty large throat i would say and of course we come down here to where the rifling begins and we're sitting here at a 0.31 let's see here probably a 0.317 so yeah it's definitely kind of an interesting groove diameter because it it does taper down and a lot of people i believe refer to this as a squeeze bore which shouldn't be a problem you know if it was the other way around then what we would have is you know <laughs> a groove diameter that is steadily growing and allowing gas cutting and that can be a problem so fortunately i don't have that issue i'm more than willing to work with a groove diameter that shrinks towards the muzzle okay folks here it is, what you've all been waiting for, and I don't need you to answer it correctly, but I'm looking for you to answer it cleverly. Now, in the Word, there is a man who is one of the many sons of old Father Abraham, yet he is the son of no one. All right. Answer that for me, first person in the comments. You're going to get a big shout out, and if you got a channel, I am going to post it on one of my coming videos very soon. So folks, thank you, like, subscribe, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of you.